Welcome back to the channel, you kooks. Well, we finished the installation, and if you missed that video, we showed you an easy, mess-free way to insulate your van. So check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. That will take you to this step that we're gonna do now to get you to this point. We have a packed video today. In this video, what we are gonna cover is one of the most scariest points in your van build, where you will cut your first hole into your van. And we're gonna cut the hole for the fantastic van. We're gonna walk you through it. And it's not that hard, so you guys can do this. The next thing that we're gonna cover in this video is how to frame up your van and get it ready for walls and get it ready to secure things to it. Then after you get all your framing up, we're gonna show you how we put our walls up. We're gonna show you why we use what materials we did. And lastly, we're gonna show you how you can chain these lights up top. There's not a lot of videos um, when we first were looking for it, so we're gonna show you how to do that in this video. So sit tight guys and get your notebooks out or whatever you gotta do, and we're gonna show you how it goes. <laughs> The fantastic fan came in today, so we're gonna install that today and show you the tools that you need to install it and then show you how we install it. So first off, the first tool that you'll need is um, a drill with a drill bit so that you can punch in some pilot holes. And then you'll also need a jigsaw to cut out the shape for your fan and you'll want a metal blade on that. And then also things that you'll need to order along with your fan is um, this lap sealant. You don't want to not have this lap sealant because you'll get leaks if you use regular caulking. So make sure to get this lap sealant and we'll put the we'll put a link for you guys in the description. And then also you'll want to get this gray putty as well so that you don't get any leaks. When you cut that hole with the jigsaw, you're going to want to use some primer paint so that you don't get any rust where you've made those fresh cuts. We chose the Fantastic Fan because it pushes out more air from what we've experienced being in other people's vans with the Max Fan. We almost upgraded and did the Max Fan, but while it is quiet, this pumps out more air and you need the air. I don't care if it's quiet or not. You need some safety goggles because you are gonna you don't want metal in your eyes, so make sure you get some safety goggles. And we're going to get up there and show you how to do it. First step once you get up on top of the roof is to measure, measure, measure before you cut. So I got this thing here and I'm going to just draw, this came with it and it's 14 by 14 I believe. I'll make sure to check that and write it right here if it's not 14 by 14. Alright so now I got my pilot holes drilled. I first drilled, I drilled with one of these and then I moved on to this big one. So I made it easy to get this big one in there by using that smaller one for the pilot holes. And now I'm going to jigsaw it. Now that we have it primed and cut out, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, putty tape on it around the edges. We got the fan in and the putty tape underneath. We're going to take the screws that came in this bag. There's some small ones that I'm leaving in there for the underside on the inside. And then these white headed long screws will go here all the way around. The screws weren't going in too well on their own so I got a little pre-drill. So I'm going to pre-drill each one of these before I put the screws. Once you have all your screws in, you're gonna wanna put your lap sealant on around the edges pretty good. Once you've gone all the way around the sides with caulking, you're gonna wanna hit the screws on top too. So I've done it here. So I ended up caulking the screws here around them really nice. And I did two additional beads around the edge and I didn't have to worry about them looking clean because it's all gonna be covered up. All right, you kooks, today we are working on framing. So I got my chop saw, my tape measure. You're gonna need a hammer, drill, and some self-tapping screws for this project. We got some eight foot furring strips. They're about $1.50 a pop. So we're gonna start with these. We got a whole stack of them. I got my first measurement and we're about to get started. 
All right, so we got our Reflectix in and we're using this just as a thermal barrier. And then we got the uh, um, ducting tape here just to make everything seamless. So here it is, the job is done. Also, we just cut holes out for where all our stuff's gonna go. All right, so once you cut your pieces, you'll just pre-drill some holes and you're gonna wanna get a little countersink hole going so when you lay your ceiling on, everything's flat across. You can see already how the screw is sunk down in that wood so it's not gonna create an uneven surface. And now you just find your board, you find your center post. Okay, so we're getting through the framing. We got a lot of the walls done. We're gonna do a piece across the top here. We didn't know if we wanted to do little side pieces or just across the top. Across the top seems to be easier. It's a weird angle here. It's hard to work with. But yeah, it's coming along. I'm gonna go over a few more tools you need for the job. So you can hear Danny has the impact driver in there. You'll need a drill. You'll need a drill bit to pre-drill all these holes so you don't split your wood. You'll want these self-tapping screws. And then I like to countersink them so my walls fit on flush. So those are a few more tools. Let's see what Danny's using in the van. So yeah, she's got the square, pretty mandatory for framing, tape measure, impact driver, yeah, we just safety measure. glasses. To keep it the same, we measure from the floor up all the way across. And we got some serious teamwork going on. <laughs> I cut the wood, chuck it to Danny, and she installs it. Today these lights came in, so I'm going to do a little chain. I have my I have my one wire for the whole chain that's going to go down the center on this that goes to a switch that's going to be there. It's a very easy process, but last time around when we were doing this, there wasn't that many people showing you exactly how to chain up your lights. So, so I'll show you how to do that. So what you're going to do is go from your main connection coming from your switch and you're going to want to see these are the two coming down this red right here and this black and what you're going to want to do is cut off the end like those are of the insulation energy in light energy out to the next light how i ex i did the whole length of the vans to connectors with tails coming off of it and then they go pigtail to the next one with tails coming off of it and then they go to the next one and I have some insulation here and then they go to the last one and the reason that I put the tails on the end is because I'm going to put the ceiling on and there's going to be holes so I'm going to put butt connectors from the bottom side it'll be easier than trying to like twist into that I realize you could do that but it's just easier to do butt connectors after I've had the ceiling in so these are just gonna hang through the ceiling holes all right Danny got the ceiling all sorted looks really nice now today we are going to put walls on our framing so we just got some thin uh interior type grade plywood and we're only going to go from here to about here with it and we bought some plastic type and we bought some other material i don't remember what it's called i'll show you here in a sec and we're going to put that down there on the bottom as well on the top so we can get a lot of space behind this cabinet here before you put your walls on you're going to want to uh, cut out your appliances so here we got our 
charging 12 volt and USB. And that's gonna sit about there. So Danny's cutting that hole. And then we're gonna put this wall on. So here are our walls. They're just these thin little guys. And we're putting them on here and we're using liquid nail and the nail gun. And we're gonna do that here and speed it all up. All right, so we had to add some slats so that when the wood hits the end of the wall, there's something for both sides to go on and just for some extra wall support. So here we go, we're gonna put it on. Okay, so we're using this uh, Plastex waterproof wall paneling for the bottoms of the van walls and as well as the roof. Danny's measuring a strip. We're gonna throw it in the top of the roof and we'll show you why and how we're using this. Go. So we scored this white stuff with the razor blade and then it says that you can just bend it like drywall. So we went with a really thin plywood here on the top. It looks really easy to finish and it was more on the cheaper end. So we use this for our plywood walls. We're only doing the walls from here to here because this is gonna be an upper cabinet and we don't really need to have a wall we can finish there. We only really need the outside walls because they're gonna be shown. So yeah, this is a great material. It's a little bit more on the cheaper end and it really gets the job done. And it saves space, you know, because it doesn't take as much space away from your living space. So we're going to put tile right on top of this, maybe paint it, or we are going to put some cool wallpaper if we can find some. The thing we want to point out when we did put up our walls is what we did for our framing. I, I measured out and wrote at each point where where the frame runs and we have little marks up top like down the center of this is a frame piece down the center of this is a frame piece so that way we know we can go into those pieces so the reason we did this is because we're going to have upper cabinets here and you lose quite a bit of space if you cover this with wood but now you see with this in here I mean, you got, I mean, it's not in all the way. We've been working on some electronics today, but you see you got a lot more space. And now when we put our cabinets on, it'll look kind of, it'll look finished enough. It's just inside the cabinet. We did it down on the bottom because we're gonna have our water tanks and sink here. I don't know, just in case anything got wet. Also along the bottom here and top here. And we'll probably just have an episode on what to do with above your door, so we're not sure there. And we got a surprise coming up on how we did the cabinets. So if you guys want to like and subscribe. Yeah, thanks. thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these videos are helpful for you. Like if there's anything else that we're kind of glossing over, please let us know in the comments. We want to really help you guys out and make sure you guys want to tackle this DIY project because you guys can do it. Us kooks can do it, you kooks can do it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.